Well, hey there, my name is Tracy Gillend. I'm Head of Marketing and Fundraising here at Your Town. And uh, we've got a little treat in store for you. I have got Sarah with me, who is our Virtual Services Manager in New South Wales and operates our Kids Helpline service down there. How are you, Sarah? Well, thank you. How are you, Tracy? Just um, we're still in lockdown, so we're probably not as um, going as well as you are. Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, you guys are, are now into your uh, 10th week in New South Wales and, and Victoria is seeing, you know, over 200 days now, which is tough, which is why we wanted to touch base with you today. Obviously, we have some uh, incredible supporters who buy tickets in our luxury house and prestige car art unions and some very generous donors and corporate sponsors and supporters that uh, help to contribute to the service. And you have recently been out to one of our prize homes at Berry. You actually did a walkthrough tour for us out there. Yes, it was my first walkthrough tour and I was very excited to see the beautiful um, set up there. It was just amazing. It was a beautiful day then we, when we went out there. Berry is a gorgeous place to uh, be located at this time especially. It sure is. And our surprise home supporters love Berry. That's the second time we've done that. So we know that people love a tree change or a sea change. And uh, certainly in, in current new uh, work from home environments and, uh, and those sorts of things, that is an aspirational thing for people to have, to have a beautiful holiday home mm -hmm. to be able to go to. And of course, um, I guess it's one of those things where we uh, no question seeing unprecedented demand in the Kids Helpline service and, uh, you know, particularly coming out of our states who've spent a lot more time in lockdown. Um, how are you guys going down there? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a challenging time, that's for sure, Tracy. I think the balance for councillors in living lockdown as well as supporting young people in lockdown, um, but we've got an amazing team down here and across the service um, our counsellors support children and young people aged from 5 to 25 years old and people can ring, you know, for um, any time, uh, for any reason. Uh, so it's, look, it's tough um, to have that parallel experience, but I think our counsellors are doing an amazing job. Yeah, incredible, incredible. And, you know, we've got, as you said, anytime, any reason, we've got, um, you know, we, we love to encourage that, that what we call early intervention and encourage young people to help seek about anything that might be on their mind. But of course, we've got a whole whole span of, of reasons that young people contact us. And, you know, we're seeing increases in anxiety and, and a bit of loneliness. And, and sometimes homes, you know, aren't as, as safe and nurturing as others. Mm -hmm. and, and that can be a real challenge as well. Yeah, I think one of the key challenges at the moment are for young people who are finishing their education. So generally they'd be looking forward to a whole heap of milestones, formals and um, exams. In New South Wales, the exams have been put, put back. Uh, so there's, you know, real uncertainty for young people at the moment. And I think that's where Kids Helpline really steps up um, in offering that service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we've had to a lot of parents say, look, I'm, I'm not actually, you know, coping myself. So I really do need the backup of Kids Helpline to be able to, to give me tips and advice as well, which is great that we've got those resources available for either parents or, or older supporters of young people so that they can see how to manage also a little bit for themselves, but also how to help young people, which is great. Yeah, and I think the other thing that's amazing is our counsellors are, you know, all professionally trained. So you're not ringing a volunteer, you're ringing someone with a um, degree in this area who really is skilled and ready to help. Absolutely. And not only are they skilled and ready to help, but these guys are actually operating in an environment where they're working from home um, and they're managing everything that's going on for them in lockdown as well as helping young people, you know, who are reaching out for support as well. That's some pretty serious uh, life experience there. Yep, yeah, it can be challenging. I mean, it's those suburban noises when the husband puts the uh, washing machine on without asking permission or somebody starts printing while you're in the middle of a call. I think that blurred line between um, work and uh, home is challenging for some people. But I think overall uh, we're seeing that increase in demand, as you said, um, and young people are still reaching out to the service um, and we're able to walk alongside them. 
yeah, which is incredible. And mm. I guess it's one of those things where, you know, our, our lovely supporters really do help to, to bolster a service that we do get some uh, funding for outside of our, our generous supporters. But really without them, this is not a service that we would be able to provide. So as you said, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, We've got the website, we have web chat, young people can reach out via phone. And we do get a lot of um, parents and supporters refer young people to, to us as well, don't we? Yeah, we do. I mean, we have parents sometimes just start the conversation up with a counsellor just to create a, a warm referral through to the counsellor. We have other services that use us um, as a referral pathway and we in turn refer back to other services. So it's a, it really is a you know, whole community service. It is, it is. And so we also have, you know, almost it's kind of like we have counsellors for counsellors, right? So we don't allow them to just be, you know, out there on their own. We do a lot of nurturing support with, with our workforce as well, don't we? Yeah, a very important part of being a professional um, service and offering the professional counselling service is making sure that our counsellors are looked after. Um, we don't want people to experience compassion fatigue or vicarious trauma. So we provide uh, regular supervision, um, which your town generously provides um, sessions to our counsellors on a, a regular basis which really helps people with their self-care and just monitoring how they're feeling themselves so that they're able to offer the best service to young people. And certainly that working environment for our counsellors uh, 30 years is a very long time to be operating a service we've seen lots of changes in that time including the internet and social media um, which is, is great because young people can actually reach out and look at our resources and get themselves a little bit of self-help as well before, during or after they speak with a counsellor, which is amazing. But we've got counsellors who've worked with us for that whole time, 30 years. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy Isn't thing. It? I think in Sydney, we're the, we're the newbies. Uh, we started March 2020 down in Sydney. We've got around 50 staff on board now. Uh, so we've grown from very small beginnings, but we're starting to become quite a um, decent workforce ourselves, contributing to the larger workforce that's situated in Queensland. So I think we've got over 200 councillors now um, working with young people across Australia, which is pretty amazing stuff. And most people don't realise, but we actually opened a New South Wales contact centre for Kids Helpline literally right at the beginning of this whole pandemic, which yes. was no doubt a massive challenge. Yes, it was a challenge. We had, had the leadership team had flown to Queensland to receive our training and to be inducted into the service only to find out that um, Queensland was shutting the border and that we needed to head back home. So it's been challenging, but at the same time, I think it's been a really wonderful experience to grow something from, you know, really small beginnings um, and to be supported by the wider team into, into what we are today. So it's been challenging, but I think at the same time we've learned a lot. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us today, Sarah, and for giving our supporters a little bit of an insight into, uh, you know, the, the fantastic service that we provide and how you guys are, are managing things down there in New South Wales. We really thank you very much. And we look forward to continuing to connect with you. We're doing some great work to keep connecting with our workforce there. So thank you so mm -hmm. much and take care and keep up the great work. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.